Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Because I'm about to start this broadcast, if something really is strong with you and important that you just, just have to ask before I get to the Q&A towards the end, maybe say something. But I won't be able to keep up with the dialogue if at the speed it could be if people start, hey, Keith, what about this or that? We'll definitely get to that, I promise. So I'm going to be focused in channeling energy. God, that being, that thing, that me, that you that lives right there. Keith, that's kind of far-fetched. Yeah, it's far, it's far in, not far out. It's real. So if God lives here and asks you to point to yourself, point here so now we're already starting the, the communication unity highway with source because we've come into a state of awareness and a consciousness <clears throat> and a realization that God me and the trick is to become aware of the very presence that is your essence that lives in you seek ye the kingdom of God within do not say low here nor low there Seek ye the kingdom of God within first. There is no other place it is. It doesn't exist anywhere else. It's right here. This is the causal universe. This is the reflective universe. Anything you bring to a situation will respond. You push against a football player, he pushes back. You kind to someone, they say thank you. Water the weed, water the plant. It's not rocket science. One thing I want to say first, and I say this, every broad burst of light broadcast it's very simple it's very powerful the truth does not need anyone's permission to exist very simple statement the truth does not need anyone's permission to exist that's it are we sure we know the exact truth not what we think is true or our own truth, but if the goal is expansion in your life on all levels, health, awareness, spiritual endowment, goodness, power, power meaning spiritual goodness, being responsible and deserving and worthy enough to integrate that as your life. It's not formal church. Church is a fantastic way to celebrate creator. Whatever church, whatever denomination, whatever country, doesn't matter. But that is not where God lives. It's a place to hang out. It's right there. So the truth doesn't need anyone's permission to exist. And one of those truths, it's actually only one truth. There's just so many different variables of one truth. It's like a little fragment and I'm just going to throw you a bone. And and all the fragments of truth is the whole of truth, and vice versa. Simple, as above, so below. And one of those truths is the subject of reincarnation. Just take it in. If you're here just for the entertainment and novelty purpose of it, hello, how you doing? I'm glad you're here. Have fun with me. I do this for fun. I don't do anything that doesn't bring me joy ever. Chew on the idea that reincarnation is true. It's real. Not just for a few. Everyone. Every single one of you. You have been reincarnated over and 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 over again. Just chew on the idea. You don't have to judge yourself or be upset with yourself or be afraid of the response that you might get from a God hammer wielding being that's going to squash you if you play with the idea of eternity. That is the very paradox of, re of eternity. It's reincarnation. Eternity means one conscious memory of everything that ever was, is, and will be. That's eternity. Makes sense, right? Reincarnation would be seen as hiccups or pauses from cosmic, infinite consciousness. God is everywhere. It's omnipresent. Present in all places at all times. There's no place it is not. Except fear. It does not dwell in fear. Because fear is our own illusion. 
So there's nothing and no place God is not. Look it up in Webster's Dictionary. It's the truth. It's a resource that we use for language. We agree that what the dictionary says is how we communicate. It was a book that was created for, to convey thought, concepts, ideas on a telepathic level. It's what it is. So reincarnation is true. I've had few experiences. You bring your loves, you bring your passions, you bring your habits, you bring your fears. So I guess the question becomes, what would be the purpose of reincarnating so many times? One, we are fortunate that we can. Many beings in the universe are standing in line waiting for human birth. That is an absolute fact. I know this from spiritual God, men, masters who I've spoken with. It's a fact. So when we reincarnate, it's because we chose to first and foremost, because it'd be fun to go down there and help create this human experience for the divine to experience itself through every person all over the galaxy, all over the cosmos. It wants to know itself through other eyes, so to speak. And so we chose to do this reincarnating thing in the human form. But in order to fully create the light that we agreed we would come down here to do, what we cannot achieve in said lifetime, you have to come back and clear it up. That is the contract you made. You have to come back and clear it up because we can't bring something tainted into a system that is of absolute purity. It would shut it down. It would be like a cancer. That can't happen. We may touch glimpses of the divine in our life through people, mystical experiences, miracles, whatever it may be. But reincarnation is real. Ask yourself, what are my passions? What are my passions? What would I just love to do? And I'm now on. If you're not doing it, why aren't you doing it? That would that would in that would end the cycle of reincarnation. Check this out. It hit me like a bolt of lightning. Living your passions, your loves, stop the cycle of reincarnation. Because when you do what you love, you are imbued with the divine. <laughs> and it's those other things that we do that we don't like doing create the grumbliness, the rumbleness, the aggravations that keeps the karmic pattern coming back over and over and over. You take a stone, your intention, you throw it in the pond, you'll see ripples. The ripples hit the edge of the pond, they come back right to the creator. You, the one that, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You reap what you sow, karma, what comes around, goes around. It's all real. It's science. And it's also truth. From the divine principle, my bestseller, this is me having a dialogue with, many years, dialogue with, you can call it God, higher version of Keith, or whatever you want to call it. I say, so tell me, is reincarnation real? And if it is, is fear the reason I had to do it so many times? Spirit says, yes, according to universal law, all actions spawned from a fearful place must come back around for review and resolution. If you do not clear your present self of past problems, you will be reborn again and again, until you do resolve them. <clears throat> the thing I must tell you is that reincarnation both does and does not exist. When scripture speaks of the beginning and the end, it is to accommodate your current frame of reference. Its concepts have to be conveyed in this way because at this point, you are only mindful of a linear timeline and cannot easily conceive of eternity. And I said, yeah, <laughs> that's a tough one to fathom, all right. Well, try it now, Keith. Take a few moments and meditate on, on eternity. When you are ready, open your eyes. You did it. You conceived of eternity in your imagination. Someone recently made a post that said, if you want to know what God is, God is imagination. It's all it does is create by its will. It's imagination. Play in your imagination. I remember having a higher self experience, a God experience. 
uh, light years away, light years in, just hyper present in a sleepscape. Now, this wasn't a dream, mind you. This was not a dream. This was an experience, a mystical experience. And it's like I'm in a movie theater, <laughs> exactly like a movie theater. And I'm this awareness, this consciousness, and I see all these different halls that lead to different metaphorical movie screens playing different movies. And I'm sitting here in this state of hyper-cosmic awareness asking myself the question. I can perfectly see all these movies playing around me, but asking myself the question, why am I only focused on this particular movie? Meaning my current life, that is an experience that I had, it was real. It was every fabric of my being, it was every fabric of what I was able to touch for that moment, which I know to be the truth because it expanded me. It was palpable. It was real. Another quick experience. One night I went to sleep, became aware of that reality, hyper aware. You can interact. This is not like watching a movie and you wake up in the morning and remember what you saw on the screen and recalling it. No, no, no. This is about being present. <clears throat> I lived a life for two weeks in this experience. I had a wife, 2.5 children, had a 9 to 5 grind. Wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, got in the car, drove to work, performed all the day's tasks, came home, kissed the wife, said hello to the children, ate supper, made love to the wife, went to bed, and I repeated the cycle every day. And I lived in this experience for two real-time weeks. And you know when you're sleeping one night and you're about to wake up in the morning, that tug that happens, that pull that brings you back into the world, that now I'm waking up from my night's sleep. I felt that very tug and woke up. And then I was in my, my reality, my job, my wife, my 2.5 kids, nine to five, did all the same things. But that wasn't really it. And I lived in it for a week. And then I felt the tug again and it woke me up into my actual bedroom. I lived three weeks <laughs> in eight hours sleep. I lived three conscious, experiential weeks in eight hours. So the truth of that, of me telling you this, is how was I able to live in this paradigm, this paradigm, the waking paradigm that fought when I finally came out? That was three. So reincarnation, or past lives, or present life, or lives, or future possible lives, is all happening now. It happened in that eight hours of three-week experience. Those were all different realities that existed in my conscious spectrum as a frequency on your radio. Like I said, when I was in that metaphorical movie theater, and I'm going, why am I focused at this one screen when there were so many around me? I experienced two others then the one that I call Keith was focused on, which was the Keith that was sleeping on the bed that experienced two different parallels of my soul's experience. So that is the principle of reincarnation. And how, in my opinion, it may sound cocky, but it's not, that I just proved the experience of reincarnation. It's not something I just believe in because I was told and it sounds convincing. And, Got nothing else better to believe in. It's concrete. It's real. All right. A little more reading to do. But do not be fooled into thinking that all you need to do is process a little here and a little there, and boom, you're God conscious. Granted, your pure, genuine intent is important. But there is much to iron out before you can become God conscious. For example, you must still work on the karmic patterns from both your past lives and your current life past. You do that by doing what I recommend, by expanding the love within you until you consciously reach the level that is God. <clears throat> that is powerful stuff. I'm going to repeat that. 
You must, for example, still work on the karmic patterns from both your past lives and your current life's past. You do that by doing what I could recommend, by expanding the love within you until you consciously reach the level that is God. So if I gave you the formula, <laughs> a formula, to become conscious, which is to live in love, and I don't mean in a, the mere sentiment of being in love with someone. That's not love. That's mostly attachment and fear. Love is allowing, appreciating, and accepting. That is what love is. And when we become that, you become that love, and you begin to expand until we become consciously aware of the level of love that is God. To reduce the risk of moving backwards, you must always keep on trucking, knowing that I walk beside you and never again have to be afraid. Keith, I see you wanting to get higher, but as the many aspects of your life are becoming finalized, I also observe the fear that is causing you to resist the changes that are taking place place my son change is inevitable just wait and see the more you close the old doors of your life the more the new ones will open for you so let me ask you a couple of questions just ask yourself this question and pause for eight seconds did you exist before this life. Just chew on it. Before your mind wants to say yes real quick, or no, just be back. Feel it. Intuit it. Be with the truth, or the truth that could blossom within you by posing the question, did you exist before this life? If you said yes, where were you? Would your answer be, I was with God? God is the beginning and the end. What does that make everything in the middle? <laughs> it's two dots and you draw a straight line, right? It becomes one. So God is the beginning and the end. If you came from God, he came here basically God broke a part of himself and put it in a body and before religion indoctrination culture parents society peers governmental all that starts bombarding the system and we become our white clean slate like the innocence of a beautiful child you must be childlike to enter gets tainted then we got to do the work so if God is beginning and the end, and we came from God, so God basically puts a piece of his essence in this body, and that wheel will turn until we become aware of it. Reincarnation. And so if we become aware of God, then we can experience all the realities. Just keep doing work. So I would like you to turn away from your screen at this moment. Just turn away. Keep listening to my voice, but turn away from the screen. Listen to my voice saying, thank you how much I appreciate you being here. Your development is important to me because it helps me want to grow even more. And I love you for it. So as you've been listening to my voice, the you that is doing the listening is the you that always was, exists now in this moment, and will forever exist. Welcome to turn back to the screen. Where does our fear of death come from? Some fear, that's the question I pose. Some fear death because they still hold on to a past life memory of how they once died. But for many, it's not about the fear of death. It's about the fear of regret. That hit me hard. Regret that they have not allowed themselves to actually live. 
just look at how afraid you were to live fully Keith to really let go and have a good time do you regret regret all the time you've wasted yes I sure do you can bet that your regret directly relates to any fear of death you are still harboring perhaps you are like those who think that if they give up being afraid their lives will only get worse Humanity has become so comfortably mired in its fear quandary that it does not remember how to balance itself. You will only be able to discover the motivation and the kind of strength you need to face your fears head on when you come together and make the effort to work things out. My beloved, it's time to lay your weary heads <laughs> to rest, says Kansas. And I asked the question, how can fear have such a hold on us? Spirit says, fear keeps you believing that what is not there is actually there. It can take any form to validate to you your make-believe reality. Further, fear energy does not just disappear. It feeds upon itself in a never-ending loop, anxiety, until its frequency until you equalize its frequency not only frequency is in vibration but frequency is in its oftenness how frequent it happens and i asked spirit can you give me an illustration and of course he wants to accommodate me gladly do you mind if i use one of your own personal fears to do that and i went uh i guess not reluctant on a beautiful spring night, you decide to take a walk around your neighborhood. Suddenly, out of nowhere, there appears a big barking dog. This is from Keith's perspective now. Perception. Oh, no, a dog. Judgment. Mean dog hurt me. My feeling, I'm afraid. My thought, what's my best move? My reaction to run my intention is to run faster than the dog <laughs> and I hear spirit laughing laughing within me as I'm having this dialogue and I said I suppose you think that's funny and the response is and you do not no it's too real for me when oh when will you release yourself from the fearful thinking that can only result in outcomes you do not what when I choose to there is no other way Keith believing that there is something to be afraid of is what helps sustain the wall between you and your liberation what do you think it will take to help break you out to help break you on through to the other side uh, I said I guess I need a power tool to become a good craftsman all these word plays right and meditation was the final answer um i think i'm gonna take a pause and get some water welcome out y'all good to see you anyone has a quick question or a comment you'd like to leave go ahead and do that and thank you for your patience while i read from the divine principle my best seller anchoring heaven on earth have you got your copy yet? <laughs> Again, same dialogue, different facet of the same pie, different wedge. It reinforces what was just read. This is God's spirit saying, if I am complete love, is there anything I have created that is not an extension of myself? And I say, absolutely nothing. And finally, if God is love, and you are God why is fear a part of your experience and not part of mine mine meaning spirit making that statement I say I have no earthly idea trying to be funny I have to admit I have to admit Keith that was a good one um, anyway this is part of just a, a funny dialogue but I want to get into the meat potatoes okay Keith your fear is nothing more than that a fear time and again the mistakes that you have made by living without divine principles have perpetuated your fear cycle and have left you with all those feelings of lack 
The fear that we keep carrying over is why we reincarnate over and over and over. Remember, whenever you buy into one of your fears, it's because you have an acronym. You have a false sense of emptiness. I will break this down. You can say fear is false emptiness actualizing reality. A space void of love. God, because as I read, the omnipresence of God. God does not dwell in fear. So it's a space void of love. It's a space void of God. And it's a space void of you. Because when you're in fear mode, you may be consumed and eaten by the fear, but you're definitely not present. So you're somewhere else. And it's not in presence. So fear is false emptiness actualizing reality. Let me read you this one more piece. There's a certain particular bit I'm looking for. It had a, had a nice, soft, powerful punch. Here you go. Look at the word external. Spell out the word external in your, oh, excuse me, yes, external in your mind. E-X-T-E-R-N-A-L, external. Notice its similarity to, similarity to the word eternal. Observe that there is just one difference. The X in the word external crosses out and interrupts the flow of the word eternal. The X crosses out the word eternal. It gets in the way of the characters of the word. It's metaphorical and it's very powerful. This is exactly what happens to your consciousness when you choose to live in external mode. You cross out all your chances for eternity. And so the current of your life will go until the time when you are able to live in unbroken flow. If you honestly seek union with me, you must hold steadfastly to your intentions and be ever vigilant, vigilant, excuse me, vigilant. When you achieve this life mode, your next death cycle will be a divine birth. Freedom from slavery, definition of freedom, captivity, or any form of arbitrary control. Departures from all rules and procedures. Freedom. It's getting out of the rules. Getting out of the box. God's not in a box. If you want to be in union with God, you can't do it in a box. God lives outside of the box. Infinitely. So we have to at least get out of our little human box to get a next, the next glimpse to move up at least one rung on the <laughs> Jacob's ladder. The spirit, spirit ritual ladder. So in closing with this dialogue about from the divine principle and about trying to, per se, convince you reincarnation is real, or at least to entertain the idea. This little man right here, Swamji Visma Yogi. The truth does not need anyone's permission again to exist. And it sounds like I'm being condescending, and it's not. It's because I'm hammering home on something that is vital, 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 vital. Because it helps break down the beliefs and the barriers to the bullshit. Not blaming them. But on some level, for whatever reasons for our development, we chose to believe. Or not believe. That little man, Swamji Visyogi, I'm going to be doing a radio interview live. This is the third time I get to interview this man. Met him four times. And when you stand by an illumined being like that, Bang! It gets big, real big, real quick, and very powerful. He told me in one of my interviews, personal upstairs in the bedroom interview, he said, Keith, many lives ago, you were very close to spirit. You're close now, but very, very close. Me telling the story is not about me. It's about I, when it is about me. You can believe me that I have no agenda except to see you happy, whatever that means for you. That's it. Because I know the realness of this avatar translates to divine descent. The fact that he told me that is part of the package of the way I'm going to close this informational segment of reincarnation, past lives, future life.
possible, uh, present life, possible future lives, is because it's enough for me to know he told me that about my past life. It, that seals it for me and all the experiences. So I'm going to open up the Q&A. Play the game with me. Entertain me. Amuse me. Amuse me. Ask yourself, as I reflect on my habits, my loves, things I don't like, things I love, what's it possible that I could have been in a past life? What does it feel like I was? Just play the game. Can't hurt you. Might, might glean something from it. Ask yourself, what was I in a past life? Don't have to be right. So what I did, I just set you up for a, an opening. I didn't know I was doing it until it's, I just spoke it. When I say I was setting you up, it may not necessarily be Keith, fully Keith is Keith, but a part of me that's not thinking, so to speak. I'm, I'm present. Something is happening through me kind of thing. When you ponder the idea, whether you believe it or not, when you ponder the idea, the possibility, you opened up to the possibility. With God, all things are possible. I also mentioned earlier that God is imagination, made us in his image, his imagination, and his likeness. As we think, will do, we put our creation in motion. So the door was opened up, and you saw that the only answer is reincarnation has to be real. You opened up the door to infinity. In infinity, it's all happening now. There's no linear timeline. God is present cosmically. That's all there is. In fact, we're extensions of it. We've got to wipe this clean and open this thing up. It's a gate. It's a stargate. Because the energy that wants to come in here can't come down here for that gate to open as long as we're ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey-minded. That's the spiritual work. No matter what religion you're in, stay with your religion. That's the gate. So... Anyone have any comments, questions? I'm not going to hold I'll, I'll be here all night. Will, love to. Mira says, So once I have awareness of my fears and where they are coming from, I am seeing that my fears are attracting experiences to validate them as true. What are some of the next steps I am to take to truly find peace with those fears so I can lay to rest and make room? Sweetheart, you just did it. <laughs> That's it. There is nothing else you have to do. Except, <laughs> ah, that's it. There's nothing else you have to do except take what you just became aware of and expand it and stay in it. Oh, every time it starts to remind you that you're supposed to pay attention to it and it distracts you, just go, ah, 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 I got you. Don't be hard on yourself for having that kind of thought. Love yourself. Love the, thank the thought for it pointing out to you when it crops up so you can dissipate it. There is nothing you, else you have to do. That's the awareness expansion I'm talking about that brings all the past, present, and future lives together that makes it makes spiritual wholeness. We call, call it the word wholeness comes from holy. Okay. Ava says, dreamt I was in outer space holding the hand of someone who was twirling me around in space. Didn't want to look at the person's face because that person scared me. I can't, I won't intuit it now. I, wouldn't, I can't even profess that I could intuit it. I can tell you what makes sense to me. Could have been, but always is an aspect of yourself. An aspect of yourself that you didn't really care about, didn't like about yourself. Um, I can go in many directions. An aspect of yourself that you didn't want to face up to something, but I, I, in the possible dance you were twirling, I, I, I don't know. It could have been so, it could mean so many things. How does it feel to you is the question. Without your analytical mind trying to decipher it, just how does it feel to you? 
what do you think it meant? Just lean into that for a little while. You don't have to pick it apart. Just lay with it. Lay with it on your pillow for a night. And then the fact that you asked the question will bring spirit to you to provide you with the clarity. Maybe just ask yourself, why was I afraid? Would it remind me something that I'm not ready for just yet? Would it remind me of something that is very powerful and I'm afraid of that kind of power because when I had it in a past life that I abused it? We've all done it. We're, we're all Hitler. We're all Christ. <laughs> we're all of it. It's where we are on the reincarnation cycle that it happened, that we become aware. aware. Everything that's ever happened happen, is now. In the future, it's happening now. It's all happening right now. Okay, Ava says, Then the person dropped into my bed, and I was me. Well, that describes it perfectly. Because in this other dimension, like I mentioned the dimensions, I have the two experiences being married to two different women with two different sets of kids that lived for three weeks and eight hours. There was three of me, the one in the waking reality on the bed and the other two, three and eight hours. You just said there was you and another person twirling around. A fear, let's just say fear. Maybe that's why you said I, can't, I couldn't wait for you to do a program about this, reincarnation, which is usually fear-based. That when you, the being dropped into you, so now the two became one. So all lives live inside of everyone. Those were just two aspects of the you that on said night you were able to experience. And when it was time for you to different, see the subtler bodies that you have, the parallel lives that you have, when it's now time to go back and be Ava Rowe for the day, you just amalgamated, came back together to go back into processing, to figure this all out. I think that's beautiful. I think you did very well. I think it was a great experience, personally. I'm working a lot. Burst of light live feed on synchronicity, magic, miracles, serendipities. What is all that? Why do they happen? How can we make them happen more? I will tell you those secrets. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. On my wall for burst of light live on synchronicity. Mira says, I love you, Keith. Thank you for this. You're welcome. Mira, I will be doing another one on Wednesday, but say hi. I, I, I love your presence. I'd love to always be in contact with you. Yeah, big guy.